Hey, good day, and welcome to another episode on Genealogy TV. My name is Connie Knox, a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Today, we are talking about my heritage, and now you're going to want to stick around because there are record sets over there that are not available anywhere else. So uh, this is definitely worth your time to sit and watch this interview because um, I was surprised, quite frank frankly. All right, so if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time we upload a video. Make sure you're hooked up with the newsletter. There's a website at genealogytv.org and a comment section below if you have any questions. Links for everything we talk about are also in the show notes right below the video. Just open up the little uh, description tab so you can see all of them there. They are also located at genealogytv.org. Now, I, I have a favor to ask if you would please, at the beginning of our Genealogy TV videos, uh, sometimes you'll see an ad. If you will not skip through it, but watch it, it only costs you 30 seconds to watch those ads, but it helps me support the channel. I really appreciate it. Now, on to my heritage. I am an equal opportunity genealogist, and I want you to be aware of all the tools and resources available to you as a genealogist. So I reached out to my heritage and I said, who can you send my way that will be willing to do an interview with us and tell us about uh, what's available over there at MyHeritage because we really haven't talked about it much on Genealogy TV. And Daniel Horowitz jumped in and said, I would be glad to talk to you about that. He is a genealogy expert over there at MyHeritage and he gave us a tour of their website. So we're going to jump into it right now. Welcome, Daniel, so much. We really appreciate you taking the time to share with us about my heritage. Uh, you know, so the viewers at home also know this is not sponsored. Um, I just want everyone to get a little bit wider view of all that is available. So welcome. Thank you very much, Connie. It's uh, really a pleasure for me to be able to guide you and to show you all the features that my heritage has for everybody. Uh, and to be able also to enlighten your audience with Thank what you. they can do with my heritage. So we're going to start with uh, Dummy 101 here. Uh, like from the beginning, give us just a little background on uh, my heritage, the, the why and how it got started. Sure. Uh, from the very basics, uh, my heritage started as an option for people to build their family trees and share them with their family members in multilingual. My Heritage is the only genealogy company that supports today 42 languages. Holy it was God. created, yeah, it was created here in Israel, but our still current CEO and, and <laughs> head of the company, Gilad Jaffer, uh, in Actually, he, he coded a lot of, of the features that we're seeing today from the day one. Uh, and, and he, as a genealogist, he didn't find anything out there that will satisfy all the needs for his family tree and his, uh, his genealogy. So he decided to just build it himself. And the company started in 2003. Uh, it came up to the public, available to the public in 2005. I came to the, com to the company in 2006. I was employee number seven. Today, we have 450 employees around the world. We have uh, two offices in Ukraine. We had one office in uh, LA, one office in Utah, two offices here in Israel. Uh, this is where our headquarters are. And we have millions and millions of users around the world enjoying my heritage. Holy cow. Well, you know, you're enlightening me as well as everyone else uh, that is not familiar with my heritage. So thank you for that. So I know that there is a free option, right? And then there is a paywall option, correct? That's right. People can start building their family tree totally for free. Okay. Uh, my heritage will allow you to put up to 250 individuals in your tree with images, with facts, everything that you want to put over there. 
you can invite an unlimited amount of family members to collaborate with you or just to see what you are doing, and that is for free. Also very important, when somebody opens an account on MyHeritage, it will actually be doing two things. At the same time is opening the free account, and at the same time is building a family tree. Now, MyHeritage understands that people may already have a family tree someplace else, and there is a standard to uh, move family trees from one place to the other called JETCOM. Mm -hmm. So you can actually import your JETCOM into MyHeritage with no problem. And is now, that part of the free option? Yes. Okay. Now, there is a little secret here. You can upload a JETCOM as big as you want and the JETCOM will go up. Okay. You will be able to work with it for a couple of days, still free, still not paying. And what is going to happen after a couple of days, we're going to suggest you to pay. Uh -huh. If you don't want to pay, it's fine. We're going to freeze your tree, meaning you will not be able to add more information. You will not be able to change okay. the information that you have over there but all the information is gonna be there for you. You can browse it and you can share it with other people until you decide that you don't want it anymore and you delete it. Okay. I'm also very aware of privacy and my heritage takes privacy very seriously. So the default is that living individuals are privatized mm -hmm. and death individuals are totally public. Why I'm saying this, because some websites and some softwares will allow you to export to JETCOM privatized. So the living individuals will not have their first names or the details. So if I will not suggest you to do that, I will suggest you to simply export a regular JETCOM and upload it to MyHeritage. Then you can decide if you want your MyHeritage website totally private, and just close it so nobody that you don't invite it to see will see anything. Or you can just open it to the whole world and make everything public. That is totally up to you. Okay, I've got another question for you. So I have a DNA test over at Ancestry and 23andMe. Can I download the raw data uh, and upload to your site? Yes, definitely. My heritage also has the DNA part since 2016. And we definitely understand that there are other companies that were doing DNA way before us. Mm -hmm. So yes, we allow you to upload your DNA from 23andMe, um, Ancestry, Living DNA, and Family Tree DNA. The upload is free and you will get some of the features that we offer also free. We have some premium features for the DNA, and over there you will need to pay $23 one-time fee to open those premium uh, features per kit. So if, you have, if you're managing multiple individuals in your family and you don't of course, you don't want to pay 23 10 times. The other option is to have a paying account. And you can have what we call the premium, a premium plus, or a data plan. And that will uh, unlock the premium features of the DNA. Okay. Before we get into that too deeply, um, perhaps you can give us a tour of, of the software which is all online, right? We don't have to download anything to our computer? Yes, that's a very good uh, clarification. Uh, today, with more than pleasure, I'm gonna show you the website. And the reason that I'm emphasizing this is because MyHeritage also has a software. Okay. That you can download to your computer for free. You can use it for free unlimited to build your family tree, it will synchronize with the website, with the limitations of the 250 individuals, and a few more than I will tell you during uh, the tour today. 
Wonderful. So awesome. Are we ready? We are ready. Go ahead and share Good. your screen and we'll we'll jump on over there and take a look <laughs> at it and get a tool. Okay. So uh, I, I'm going to jump directly into the family tree. And, and this is a demo tree that I have built uh, to showcase um, the capabilities of my heritage. Uh, you can see me on the bottom with a fake name. You can see some relatives up here. Uh, now, very important is the uh, boxes for every relative because in those boxes, you will see a plus on the bottom of each. And that is the way that you can add more relatives to your tree. So you select which relative you want to upload, uh, to create, I'm sorry, and then uh, you will fill the information for that individual. Uh, parents, uh, by the way, you can add it right from those squares above the uh, oldest generation. Another very important thing is the pencil that you will find in the corner. This will allow you to a quick edit, meaning the very basic facts that every genealogy works with, which means BMD, birth, marriage, and death. Uh, you have right here all the form and all the uh, spaces to fill. Uh, you can choose how you want to write your, your dates if you're not sure, or uh, you have a range of dates, uh, the places, uh, the relationship, anything that you need to do very basically. If you are a more experienced genealogy and you have other facts like education, occupation, you know, all the facts of life, you can go further down here and see the more advanced uh, facts and, and forms that my heritage has for you. But for now, I'm going to leave it right here up to the basic. Um, what you're looking also on your screen is the left panel that will reflect what you know or what you have about that individual in particular, including uh, photos and including uh, adding more people or edit. And something very important that I get this question all the time is, uh, if somebody made a mistake and they want to delete somebody from the tree, how do I do it? Right on the three dots, you have the option to delete this person. So it's very important for your audience to understand that although my heritage is giving you the platform to build the family tree, all the information over there is yours and you decide what stays, what goes and what is done for that. Um, another very important thing that you can see in this menu is to connect or remove connection with people because you may have marriages between your family, you know, your second cousin from your mother's side decided to marry it, your first cousin from your father's side, you don't want to duplicate those people. So you want just to connect them or remove the connection. Uh, also biological families, adoptive families, all those connections you can manage right there. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that we're all clear this is your personal tree, right? This is not like a collaborative tree like Family Search, right? Uh, that's right. This is my personal and, and ownership tree. Okay. I can decide to invite people uh, and normally, you know what? Let me do that. Let me create a son for Deacon right here. And I'm going to call him Daniel. Uh, the son is going to be alive. Very important also, uh, we already talked about the privatization on my heritage. Even if I don't know anything about uh, the disease of this person, if I don't mark this person as deceased, this person is leaving and privatization will rule over that individual. So now you're seeing that I have the option here to invite this person to the website. So I can just come here and type uh, whatever email address I know for the person, and this will generate an invitation. It means that that person can come and can see or touch what I have here, and that will depend 
on the um, settings of the website. I always tell people to go over the settings of the website and making sure that the privatization and the name and, and all the specifications is exactly as the person wants. Okay. So when you're inviting somebody like that, now you're inviting them to the entire tree, not just that one person, correct? Yes, you, he will okay. be able to see all the website and all the tree and all the information that I have here. So I was playing around with the discovery area last night. So tell us a little bit about what, that, what that's all about. Sure, uh, the discovery, which you can actually see it up here, or you can access it from uh, the discovery menu as well, is um, information about a branch of the family based on a match that we found in another tree. In this case, for example, MyHeritage recognized Simon Steiner from here. And we recognize him in another website and we can uh, based on your approval, we can bring you, in this case, 38, but it could be up to 50 individuals from another family tree. Okay. Now, so it's another family tree on my heritage, not... Yes. Okay, just one. Yes. Uh, this, this is based on a previous technology, which is called smart matches. Mm -hmm. And smart matches are all those green circles that you see on the corner of the card. Mm -hmm. This means that my heritage recognized the match. He recognized this person in another family tree with more or less information. Now you can click on that and you can see, you know what, allow me to go first here. You will be able to see on the left side, your uh, individual in your tree on the right side is the individual in another family tree. So in this case, uh, I know that Richard Hope from the United States, he has the same Simon Steiner, uh, and this is the information that he has, and my heritage is telling me that I can add more information to my tree. Now, now very if, important. Quick question. If a person is under the free plan, will they be able to review, view this match? Good, exactly. That's why I, what I wanted to clarify. You are seeing all the information right now because this demo account, it's a premium account. Okay. The basic account will not reveal the information we will tell you that we have his birth year, birthplace, uh, name of the parents, name of the wife, etc. Then you can even go further and review the match, but again, you will not be able to see the information itself. Only if you pay, you will be able to see the information, accept the match, and extract the information from the other website into yours. Okay, fair enough. Another of the premium features is, and I will recommend this to everybody out there, is before we run and we copy all this information that my heritage is finding, I should first get in touch with Richard. And I should ask Richard, why you have my great grandfather in your family tree? Where did you took all this information from that I don't have? What are your sources? What are your citations? Contacting the other administrator, it's also a premium feature. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, so, and, and this is speaks to exactly what I'm always preaching about. Verify your connections before you connect. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Now, uh, let's go back to the family tree because just as we already said that and you were asking about the discoveries, uh, and I will go with the discoveries that I have up here. Uh, the discovery, as I said, is based on the smart match. So the first thing 
that my heritage is going to ask me is if this is my person. Once I have clicked and I said, okay, yes, this is my person. So my heritage is going to tell me, okay, so look, I have all this information coming from another website. Hopefully I will have also pictures. I will have a lot of information, but you will not be like, you see uh, who managed the tree from where, but the discoveries will not allow you to contact this person up front or pick and choose which of those individuals you want. It's kind of an all or nothing. Now, I understand, we understand it's a risk, but right. when you do this, you will see a new tag on each of those individuals on the tree. So you can later on contact L. Smith, in this case, uh, you can review the information, you can decide to uh, delete or leave uh, the information, the new information in your tree and keep the process of uh, uh, genealogy. Wonderful, okay. Okay, now one more thing about the instant discoveries. And the reason for this is because we know that there are a lot of very expert genealogists out there that will say, my heritage will not bring me anything new. I already have all the names and everybody and all the details. But you know, sometimes we are missing pictures. And photos are a very important part of my heritage. So in the case that my heritage finds photos out there that are missing in your family tree, we will give you the photo discoveries. Again, under the discovery page is the instant discoveries that we're covering now. And I'm selecting photo discoveries right here. So my heritage is telling me that I have some pictures and, and some personal photos from people in my tree that I'm missing. And I will be able to go in to see again who is the person contact the person here, or simply accept or reject and add those images into my tree. At the left, always the people in my tree who are missing uh, these uh, photos. Beautiful, all right. So is there anything else on the discoveries that you wanna talk about before I hit yes. you with the next question? <laughs> yes. Um, because uh, we talked about the smart matches, but we also have other type of matches, which is record matches. My heritage has a database of almost 10 billion, 9.7578 billion historical records from all over the world. So in the matches, you can see matches by source or you can see matches by people. For the record matches, I like to see them by, uh, oh, I don't have any pending matches here, uh, but I like to see the matches by source. I will see different collections here where my heritage found your family in the records, very similar to the smart matches. You will be able to go over uh, the different individuals with the records and you will be able to compare the information and accept the match and extract it into your family tree directly. Uh, let me ask you to make sure that I, we are clear on the difference between the smart matches and the record matches. Go ahead. No, I mean, that's the question. What it, exactly, what is the oh. difference? I want yeah. to make sure that we're clear on what, what a smart match is as opposed to a record match. Good. So smart matches are matches between family trees on my heritage. Okay. It's a my heritage user that builds and manage another family tree. Okay. You have a person that you can contact, you can interact with, and you can get more information from him. Record matches are just, records. Uh, yeah. Now, okay. there, is, there is a small exception to that because under the records that we have, and let me go to the research part, which is where my heritage has 
uh, the search engine with the records, we have a collection of family trees from Family Search and from Genie. Now, Genie is a MyHeritage company. We acquired them a few years ago. We decided to keep them separately because of the way the Genie manages the profiles and the family trees over there. It's more a collaborative family tree, family search style, as you pointed before. And we have also collections from family tree, from family search. So those two are considered records because we don't, we don't have the capability to put you in contact with the creator of that family tree. So for okay. us, those are records. So do you have, um, do you have record groups that are, are different or are you guys out there actively uh, purchasing record groups uh, that are maybe different than some of the other companies? Definitely. Uh, besides the, the records that everybody has and everybody exchange with everybody, uh, we also have exclusive agreements with groups and archives. We are also acquiring uh, exclusive records. Sometimes, uh, and let me tell you this secret now, uh, we have uh, in a country very close to here, we are having a digitization project where we are putting uh, people and equipment to digitize the records. And very soon there were going to be indexed as well uh, and be part of the MyHeritage collection. Uh, we have a special emphasis in Europe. Uh, we have very good collections uh, from countries in Europe and we're acquiring and we're looking for more and more records uh, every day. Definitely, yes. Wonderful. So this is an opportunity for people to cast a wider net when they can't find what they're looking for, maybe on their their primary service that might be different than MyHeritage. Yes, and not only that, but uh, remember I said MyHeritage supports 42 languages? Yes. And I'm saying that we have an emphasis in Europe. And you know, some countries don't speak English or don't even write in Latin characters, because I'm pretty sure you can search German records, Polish records, and, and besides the accent characters, you will actually be able to find your people. But what about if you're looking for your Russian cousins or Ukrainian or Greek or Hebrew? Those are totally different alphabets. So MyHeritage has a special technology embedded in the search engine. So whenever you are, are looking for your relatives, if we found them in special collections, non-Latin characters, we will allow you, or, or we will transliterate the name, and we will retransliterate the names of the results. So you will be able to evaluate every result, even in a different language, but you will still be able to understand if this is your guy or not. Well, that's amazing. Um, and I'm sure it is no easy task, uh, especially, you said 42 different languages? Uh, well, yeah, you can build your family tree and you can browse my heritage in 42 different languages. The languages that we have right now in the transliteration mode uh, are four. Okay. Uh, obviously, English or Latin characters, uh, for that matter. Uh, Russian, Ukrainian, Greek, and Hebrew. Wonderful. Well, that certainly sounds to me like an advantage uh, for those who might be looking in those areas. Because uh, I'm not aware of anybody else that's doing it quite to that extent. Nope, we're the only ones. Wow. Now, let me take this pause to make something also clear. Uh -huh. uh, you can search for free you will see the results with, again, not displaying all the information, but we will let you know what information we found for you. In order to see the record, you may need a data plan. MyHeritage has separate between the family tree part and the records. You know, some people, they just want to go for the records. They don't want to pay for the family tree. Other people just want the trees and not the records. 
for whoever wants everything, we have something called complete. And it's not by countries or by regions in the world, it's like everything. Whatever my heritage has, if you have the data plan, you will see all the records. If you have the complete, you will get all the premium features from the web, from the tree and all the records from the, the search engine. Well, and, and the reality is, for the folks at home, <laughs> uh, this is not a cheap adventure uh, for these companies to do this. It costs a lot of money to acquire these records. It costs a lot of money to maintain these records. It costs mm -hmm. a lot of money to maintain the search engines and such. So at some point, you know, it all can't be free. Uh, we do need to, to help support these companies. So, But we, we do have a few collections for free. For example, one of the probably the best ones, I think, uh, it's a partnership that we have with Billion Graves. So mm -hmm. you can search on MyHeritage and you will find results from Billion Graves. The advantage is that when, when you do Billion Graves out of the United States, the transcription of the tombstone is in the language that the tombstone is written. Mm -hmm. So if you're searching directly on Billion Graves, you will not be able to catch those languages. If you search through my heritage, my heritage will apply the transliteration and those records are free. And those are not the only ones. We have a very good number of collections that are available for free. And yes, the other ones, just as you said, uh, we, we're investing. We're investing in technology, we're investing in people and in work, and yeah, we need to charge. Well, it's amazing what you guys are doing over there. Um, all right, let's talk about the DNA piece for a minute. Do you wanna, do we, I don't think we really got too deep into that. Um, so you can no. upload your DNA. Uh, yes. And now do you guys sell DNA kits specifically? Yes, we do have our own DNA kit. Uh, it's a swap. It's a cheek swap. Okay. Uh, we don't want you to spit on anybody else. Um, very similar to other companies' cheek swap. You swap your cheek, you send it to the lab, you get the results. Um, now, we do have some limitations on certain countries. Uh, one of them, Israel, where we are today, where I am today, where I'm now. So I will not be able to show you uh, the different features that we offer. But with your results, you're actually getting two things. You're getting your ethnicity estimation. Mm -hmm. uh, and please, 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 it's an estimation. Um, like we genealogies, we don't do this for the ethnicity. I don't have to do a DNA test to know that I'm 86% Ashkenazi Jew. Believe me, I knew that before. Uh, so what you get besides that is the matches. Right. And matches with people, again, from all over the world uh, with a very specific emphasis right now in Europe. Um, I, I don't know how many of your audience out there are aware of the song contest Eurovision that just ended here in Europe. My Heritage was the sole sponsor. Of, uh, of this year competition. Uh, so we have a very a strong presence in all Europe. We are selling DNA kits all over Europe. So you're getting your matches and we're also getting a lot of success stories. Uh, we have a project called DNA Quest where MyHeritage donated 5,000 DNA kits for adoptees or people looking for their biological family. And, and we are actually reuniting sisters, brothers, families, parents with the kids, uh, thanks to those uh, tests. And, and like I'm talking about, for example, two sisters in, in Scandinavian countries with, uh, with a brother or a sister in the United States that otherwise they will never find uh, themselves. And the very last thing that we released uh, in the world of the DNA is the health product. So if you have a MyHeritage DNA test uh, yourself, you can upgrade that and get the health report uh, besides your matches and the ethnicity. So your health report, is that 
uh, similar to the 23andMe health report? Or yes. do you have different, are you testing for different things? Uh, well, right now we're, we're just uh, starting uh, to do that. So we have uh, kind of a small limited number of, of reports. Uh, but again, it's, it's in the same way we have uh, carrier reports and we have risk reports. And you will know like what are your risk to some of the um, um, sickness that you can get, uh, health problems that you can have, uh, or if you're a carrier of one of those and, and you will transmit that also to your kids. Uh, with the time, we will add more and more uh, reports over there. So can you download your DNA uh, results from MyHeritage and perhaps upload it to like something like uh, GEDmatch if they want to do the th third party software? Definitely, yes. It's your information. You do with it whatever you want, yes. Uh, maybe uh, we can run a search uh, for a record and show you a little bit about what we have here. Absolutely. So Connie, why you don't give me a name from any of your ancestors and let's see what I can find in my heritage for them. So I just wanted to clarify like any good magician, right? That we didn't synchronize before, we didn't arrange this. You're just giving me one name for the first time I'm hearing that name and let's see what happens. All right, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> now we have Henry Henley G. Uh, do you want to give me a year? He was born in 1862. Okay, that's probably a little bit of heart person, but let's give it a try. Okay. Uh, so we found probably your guy uh, in another family tree managed by Thomas Stubbs. Your nudging but I don't know if you know this person or not. Uh, now you can see here how the privatizations work right away. Uh, all those children are marked as leaving so I only get the last name and not the first name. Uh, and then I have other records like uh, Interment or the England and Wales censuses. Uh, I can choose from the different categories uh, let's say, for example, immigration and travels. And, and probably this is not uh, your uh, family anymore, but uh, let me show you here, for example, Ellis Island. Uh, it's also a very nice collection that we have. Uh, the reason why I'm very proud, and again, I'm just working with this as we go. Uh, the reason why I like the Ellis Island collection is because we have uh, indexed not only the name of the person that uh, came uh, on the ship, but also the name of the family that was in the United States, which is normally, you know, appears in the other page, not on the main one, but on, on, on the next one, like uh, side by side. Uh, so if you're looking for somebody, even that, let's say, your relative never emigrated or, or immigrated into the United States, probably he was mentioned as the relative of somebody else that came to the United States. So still you will be able uh, to find it over there. And as you can see, you can see the, the image perfectly with no problem and you have all the information right here. Now, so your Ellis Island records are indexed, is yes. what you said earlier. Yes. Not only, again, by the person uh, that is coming, not only by the immigrant, but also by the family mentioned living in the country. Wonderful. Okay. And, you know, you're, what you're saying is basically the same thing I'm preaching all the time, is make sure that you're, like on census records, for example, make sure you're doing five or ten pages in either direction. In fact, I do a whole series on, on how to export that information and make it easier to find. But... Um, Definitely. This, you this you have awesome. no idea how many people find their relative on the first line or the last line and they don't bother just to turn the page and have the rest of the family right there and they're missing it. That's right. 
Yeah. Uh, um, yes. So this no. is wonderful. Now, is there a, um, if you scroll down just a little bit, is there oh, yeah. an actual um, typewritten version of that on the screen? I yes. see the image. Yes. But, yes. Okay. Uh, let me go to the England's and Wales census uh, just to show the audience a different census. Uh, you have here like all the information with all the family that you can copy paste. Uh, in this case, we have a button to see the actual image. Um, but, okay, exactly. Uh, so, cite this record. So you have all nice. the information from the source. You can copy to your clipboard. Whenever you save this record to your tree, the source citation will be um, will be added automatically. That is awesome because, yeah, another one of those things I'm always preaching is cite your sources, and um, and yeah. I am teaching that uh, you need to be putting those in footnotes. So this is really makes it easy just to copy it and put it in your footnotes. So mm -hmm. yes, yeah, just by clicking here, everything is copy and paste, and that's it. Now, Connie, one more technology that I would like to emphasize, and it's this little guy that I have at the end of this record. And this may or may not appear. Remember, the Ellis Island record didn't have it. This is Record Detective. And what is happening here is that MyHeritage just took all the information, not only from the main person, Henry Henley, which is the one we were looking for, but all the rest of the people mentioned here and search for them and brought you right here the results. So he not only appears in the, um, I'm sorry, this was the um, 1901 census, but he also appears in the 1891 and the 1911. Nice. So by, by clicking here, Okay, you can see the information and you can simply jump to the very next uh, record, okay, and keep discovering new information. Uh, and this record detectives, exactly, beautiful, um, is both taking information from the other family trees. You see that now I have more people because this generation was recorded in family search, for example, or other record. Uh, or another family tree in my heritage. Beautiful. So this is like uh, what I like to call, this is like a snowball coming down the hill. And the reason why we genealogists don't go to sleep before four o'clock in the morning, because you get <laughs> caught in this clicking and, and evaluating more records and getting more information. <laughs> that is too funny. Yes. Yes. Yes, we, uh, I don't think there's probably a single genealogist who's watching this right now who hasn't spent a late night or two uh, chasing different rabbit holes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and again, you can always uh, be uh, on top of what MyHeritage is releasing new collections. Uh, we have a collection catalog. Uh, you can search and filter here by different collections, the new collections. You can see what we have hear from the different periods, from the different locations. Um, and very soon, like we're going to announce probably more records every, every two, three months, we are doing a big release of, of collections coming up. Now I noticed in the research tab, newspapers, which is always one of my favorite things. Uh, where are these newspapers? Are these in a variety These are from all over the world. Like you have the first ones from Australia, then you have uh, American history newspaper, you have Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, uh, different states uh, from the United States, uh, some European newspapers as well. We have newspapers from England as well. So are these exclusive to MyHeritage or are they linking to other sites like newspapers.com and some of, some of them are exclusive uh, we don't work with newspapers.com all right so one of the things that I'm always professing is to research by location before researching by surname 
So if we want to see what you have for, say, the state of North Carolina, uh, how do we do that? Well, you have two options. You can do that from the catalog right here, okay? Or if you scroll on the search engine page a little bit down, you will have a map. Uh, and then I can select the continent or, in this case, Canada or the United States. Okay. Uh, and then if it's a continent, you will see all the countries from the continent. If it's United States, you will see it by states. Uh, which one you mentioned before? North Carolina, which I see there. North Carolina right here. So now the search page is going to be focused on North Carolina only. And you will see like all the results are going to be related to North Carolina. And those are the collections that we have from North Carolina. Perfect. Now, uh, a, a, a point of information here, because I know... Also, a lot of people complain, well, I choose a particular region and you're bringing me uh, a totally different collection. Well, probably yes, but if you notice, maybe we brought you, I don't know, death uh, in California, but the guy was born in North Carolina. So even that the death happened in California, this may be a relevant record for you. So okay. that is why sometimes you see other uh, collections reflected on the result, even that you uh, actually was searching only on North Carolina records. Okay, let's talk about uh, prices. Let's talk about the price of a DNA kit and a price of, of the service here if we want to sign up. Uh, let me play by ear. Uh, DNA kits are regularly $79. Okay. And as any other com company, we have specials. Father's Day, Mother's Day, Independence Day. Uh, it can go down to $59. Uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it's not a secret. It goes down to $49. When we are at conferences, um, people can buy that the DNA kit for $49 as well. Okay, so this is the price list. And... Let me go back one step because uh, I, I, I want to know the people to know how I got there. Uh, normally, you have the price list on the bottom of, of every page. There is a black ribbon or, or a gray ribbon over there, and you will see prices. And here you will see uh, the prices for your country. Um, yeah, here, uh, because I am selecting an Israel, uh, so I, one second, yeah, I, I'm seeing the prices in shekels, uh, which is the currency in Israel. But uh, if you go there, you probably will be able to see the prices in dollars for you. And not only that, but you will see exactly what are you paying for. Uh, you have like the premium account, the premium plus, the data plan, and the complete. So you can decide, you can learn more from each of those and you can decide which one you want to buy. Now, the price is a year price, yearly price. Uh, what happened the second year if, do, if you don't want to renew? Well, you don't have to. The information will reside over there, would still be available on the, uh, on the website. As I said before, the, the website is going to be frozen, meaning you will not be able to edit the information or add more individuals. You will not be able to communicate or uh, with the other administrator or accept the matches. Whenever you feel comfortable to come back, you can just reactivate, repay, and, and reactivate your account and continue your uh, genealogy research. And so everybody, everything will still be there, right? Yes. Yes, Can you, unless, unless you delete it, everything will keep, be, keep be there. And can you do a GEDCOM export of your tree from MyHeritage? Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 I know definitely. we talked about uploading from a, a GEDCOM, but I didn't. But you can also download, yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Wonderful. Now, um, we were mentioning about the DNAs, uh, and again, the health 
uh, if you have a DNA test, you can upgrade uh, or, or get the health component uh, for $120, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, $199, uh, again, is what I remember is the, the price for a health and ancestry kit. Oh, beautiful. Yes, 199 uh, just as I remembered. Um, where, oh, yeah. Okay, so now we're looking at, for the audience at home, we're looking at my account here in the United States. If someone wanted to purchase from their free account, how do they do that? Uh, well, you just uh, click on the health uh, tab on the, on the menu, uh, and you have order on the, the last option, which is order DNA kit on the menu, or... You go to the landing page right there, uh, and, uh, and you will trigger the order process. Uh, this will be, as I said before, this will be a health and ancestry kit, meaning you're going to get both the health and the, um, and the, and the matches and the uh, ethnicity estimation. Uh, here we are looking at, the, in a different way, different view, different design, uh, premium, premium plus, and complete. This is for the family trees uh, or the records. The complete will include the records. And you have over there the prices uh, monthly and annually, uh, how much we are uh, charging you. And of course, uh, for the audience, this is in US dollars. Um, now this changes if somebody in the UK is watching this or Canada, this changes per per country? Yes, you will see the price in your local currency. Okay. Just uh, put your mouse over the DNA and then go to um, order DNA kits, yes. And, and you can upload right from there as you see. Uh, I just want to make sure about the price. So yes, as you see, uh, the exactly. price is 79. Right now, I, I wasn't aware uh, of this special of 59. Um, and then uh, you can add the, the complete plan first month for free. So you can see everything from the DNA and you can, uh, you can experience my heritage uh, with all the features. Um, and if you have, I think more than, uh, more than two or three DNA kits, um, the, the shipping is free depending on, on the, uh, on the promotion, um, yeah, free shipping right there. Okay, and and remember that this uh, colorful DNA kit is only matches and ethnicities. But uh, we we definitely will will need to. Uh, and I have a, a demo account that we can use later on, uh, not to affect privacy of of leaving individuals and other users. And and I can show you in detail all what it's related to the DNA and the health part. Thank you. Uh, this has been wildly helpful. Did we miss anything? Um, no, I think uh, we got a pretty much good overview of, of everything. Um, uh, again, I would love uh, for you to dedicate a little bit more of time to your family tree. We I can certainly love, do that. Yeah, I would love to uh, be back answering questions uh, probably that the audience uh, will do on, on your videos on YouTube. I know that uh, a lot make comments and make questions over there. Uh, we can talk about uh, the DNA in health and, or, or just go by, by any other subject that you would like to touch. Fabulous. So if anybody at home has questions, put them in the comment sections below the video and uh, We'll get Daniel back on here and answer some of those questions and maybe uh, talk a little bit more about the DNA side that you wanted to talk about. Uh, I know new that collections, new features are that are coming. Yes, definitely. Well, and uh, the audience at home does not realize that it is very late your time and we really appreciate you taking the time. Um, the time difference between Israel and the United States is significant so we we really do appreciate you staying up late tonight to talk to us and it's totally uh, my pleasure i appreciate it and next time you're back in the states maybe we'll uh we'll we'll bump into each other at a conference or something uh well yes i'm um, actually next month uh i'm gonna go fly to the u.s uh for a couple of conference uh, fgs in washington 
Uh, but then I will need to come back very fast to Europe because my heritage is having its second uh, own conference. This year it's in Amsterdam. Last year we held it in Oslo. Uh, and we are having two days of fun lectures about my heritage. Uh, we have support people, we have uh, product managers. Uh, our own CEO is going to be wandering around and, and chatting with people, with the users, and we're going to have a blast over there. Fabulous. So this is September 6 to 8. So if, if you're still on time, uh, just make your reservations. There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we, will, we will certainly chat again uh, when we can, we can uh, square away the time for both of us on the, on the, a little bit more about the DNA side. Cause I'm, I know everybody's always very interested in the DNA side. So we really okay. appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Daniel, uh, for the interview and the tour of the website. I know I learned a lot. So if you at home have uh, questions, you can leave those in the comment sections below. Also, there will be more information about any show that we do in the description fields below and at genealogytv.org. Make sure you bookmark that website so that you can find it again easily. All right, now, um, we promised that uh, we would get back with Daniel here in the future. So if you do have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment sections below. We'll gather those up and see if we can't get Daniel to answer those again uh, for everybody at home to watch. He was also going to tell us a little bit more, I think, about the DNA side too. So there you have it. It's time for you to get back to your uh, family history research. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.